angles, again, angles are actually a better way to proof your work because angles are never wrong, right? You can take a measurement of something, and if you have the tiniest little bit off on that measurement, a little bit further, no good. But on an angle, if I'm here, or here, or here, the angle doesn't change. It's still the same angle, right? Angles go on forever in every direction. It's not a size, right? But as long as my angle is correct, it doesn't matter where I'm taking the measurement from. So to, to practice doing angles, I need to be able to bring this measuring implement across without bumping and without having to jog, right? So I want to make sure I can bring it across here like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the angle of the first one up there. And then I'm going to bring it across and see that it lines up perfectly on my arm down. And now do the second one. I bring this and I stand it up straight up and down, then rotate it from my shoulder. Again, as if I'm on, put it on a piece of glass and rotate it. I want to be very careful not to tip it forward or back. It's got to be straight up and down. If you start on an, on an, on an angle like this, you're more likely to be tipped forward or back. Straight up and down and then rotate from the shoulder. So I close one eye, I start straight up and down, I rotate, I get the angle of the second one, and I bring it across, and it lines up perfectly. I rotate for the third one, bring it across, perfect. And I'm gonna do that across the board. I can do that, and I'll do it over and over, just to get used to measuring, so that I know when I measure an angle there, and I bring it here, I know I can trust it. Just like we did the three balls when we started measuring for, when we first started measuring. It's the first thing we do. This is going to get you confident that when you measure an angle, you're always bringing the angle correctly from there to here. These might not be best done this way, or this one might be better done this way, right? So I may be rotating, 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 and then for this, this way, and this one's no good, this one would have to be this way. But this one might be best rotated this way in order to get the measurement. You want to be very careful about it, right? And so again, kind of hold it like this so that you're not, you don't have to worry about bumping as you go. But all you're going to do is test your, test your angles. And so, but this is a great exercise and you can do this for yourself. All I did was just a bunch of straight lines with a straight edge. Two pieces of paper, carbon paper in between, make sure that they are squared to each other. They can't even be jogged a little bit because then your angles won't line up. And then just a bunch of lines that keep just getting more and more of an angle. So in order to use this in, in real time, what we want to do is so just for argument's sake, we have two options. So I can use standard unit of measure I'm going to totally fake my way through this. Um, but so I could use standard unit of measure to draw that, right? And let's say I do, let's say I use standard unit of measure and for argument's sake Let's say that's my drawing. I can now measure the angle from here to here. I go like this. I rotate it until the needle is on both points. Once it is, I bring it over. And these should line up, right? So this is the line, which means this is actually here. That's a proper distance based on that angle and that height. So if this height and width, this height and width are right, this angle is going to tell me where that goes. Now, do you guys do, you guys know how GPS works? The triangulation between triangulation, the satellites. right? So if this angle by itself doesn't mean anything, but if I then measure this angle and I know that it works by connecting this one, this to here, 
this to here, and then this to here. If those three line up where they line up, locks the drawing in place. Once I have that, I can use this to figure out, right, this one and this one to figure out where that point goes. I can use this, or I can use this and this to figure out where that one goes. Once I have three points locked in, I can then use two of them and where, it, where they intersect is where the third thing goes. Okay? And so, and that's triangulation. But just basically, to be able to take an angle, like if I know that the height of the cone is here, like that's the height of the cone, I can take the angle on the outside and I can put this here and I know exactly where this is. I know that is the, that's the angle. Do it on the other side. Right, same thing here. Right, and it's like, okay, so that's my cone. So if I know the height, that's my cone. And again, I'm kind of moving through it quickly, but, but the idea is that the angles never lie. Heights and widths, they can, be, they can be terribly flawed. A little bit one direction on one thing, a little bit in the other direction on another, and you start getting these skewed drawings, which is why we don't lean on measuring to, fig to, to figure out what's going on. We figure out what's going on, and then we check it with a measuring tool. This, same thing, you can check an angle after you have your drawing. Check an angle and see where things are. See if your drawing lines up. Right? So, and again, this is, you know, this is pretty straightforward, but anything you put up there, you can use angles to figure out if they're right. Even on the lion. And again, you start getting into, you have to be a lot closer to do this, but I can use triangulation. This point, maybe to this point, and this point, so two very easily fixed points. I can figure out this angle, I can figure out this angle, and where they intersect, that goes. I know this is straight, right? Once I have this, I can then use this to figure out this one. Not straight across, but I can get the angle here, which again, it's a ray, right? It's a ray, it's, and then I can take, so that's, that's one fixed point. I can go from this corner, second fixed point, and then these. Right, if I know these are connected, these are both linked in, once I, get, once I get this third one, that's now locked. Now I can use that to figure out something else. I can, again, we can start figuring out where all of these things go. And if you want to kind of nudge this drawing to really perfect it, yeah, it would take some time using angles, but it, once you start, once you lock in a couple of them, and like this is easy, you lock in this one, this one, this one, and this one. And once you get anything up in here, now you've got, you've got triangle, 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 triangle. Here you can create, right? So it becomes very easy once you get something up in here that you know is correct. It becomes very simple to then use those points to check everything, right? So maybe I would take, maybe I would take the very top of this so I would have a triangle here. But this triangle exists also, right? And I could do this one. Right, there's a whole bunch of things. So I can use any of these three, I used, or any of the one, two, three, four, five, to find something else up in here. And again, I probably work down in here, build a few of these, so that I inch my way up as I'm checking. Does this all make sense? Again, so, but triangulation is pretty simple. You have to, you have, to have two fixed points that you know are correct, and then you, then you use those to find the third. Again, if you, have, if you have two fixed points and you're trying to find one up in here, if this angle goes this way and this angle goes this way, where they intersect is the point you're looking for. And then if you're trying to find something out here, you can either use this and this, this and this, or this and this, right? This, this and this, this and this, this and this. Any one of them, any one of those combinations and where they intersect, as long as your angle is correct, that's where it goes. And we're not talking about kind of in that arrow. I'm talking exactly where it goes. Where those two lines cross, as long as you've got your angle measurement right, that is exactly where it goes. Not margin of error. It is exactly where it goes. When I say angles never lie. They're more work to build a drawing because you literally create a drawing like this and then it has to be connected. But it's a wonderful way to proof the work you've done to make sure it's right.
okay? And you can mix these along the way. So you start with standard unit of measure, and you kind of break things down, and then you're like, oh, let me just check the angle on this. Okay, let me t okay that has to be moved out a little bit. Okay, let me fix that. Before you even put the objects in, this box has to be moved a little bit. Move it over so that when you draw the object that's in the box, that it's placed properly or better, right? And again, obviously, if you have a box and it's a bottle like this, you can't use this corner. You would have to, you would have to figure out like its absolute width. You would have to use like this corner where the bottle touches like that, right? But again, you play around with this stuff. It's not... You don't have to use one thing over another. Standard, of, standard unit of measure should be your baseline approach because that's, that is seeing with your eyes how things relate to each other. The grid helps to break those boxes down for very complex subjects. And I say very complex. It doesn't have to be like that line. I know we have a pedestal sitting around here somewhere. And it fits a good example of the kind of thing you would use a grid for. I just want, I want to put it up there because it's, it's so, so people can see it. Even this, this is a great object to use a grid. That's a great object for a grid because you're going to find things that fall in the quarter marks, the one third marks, the half mark. Yeah, I'm not saying that is the one. But use a grid something like this. Even something like that. That's 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 going to be. It would definitely help. But there's a lot going on that you have to you have to employ significant drawing skills in addition to a grid. Yeah. But yeah, standard unit of measure, you're not breaking that down using standard unit of measure. Yeah, no way. Nope. I there's no, it yeah, there's just too much going on, it's too fluid, it's, the landmarks are, are so random. But that would be a perfect object for a grid. But again, in something like that, once the grid is built, you have got some serious drawing to do. But if you can build the boxes and make them small enough, it informs you where each thing goes. How much time do you spend on that? You know, that's your call. Yeah. yeah. So, but but objects like that are great. Like the lion. Yeah, it's a good thing, but it's it's a lot of work, like an insane amount of work. Something like these acanthus leaves, or whatever this is called, Florida leaves. Florida leaves. Florida leaf. Florida leaf. Well, like the, that, the acanthus the leaves over there, right? Like that kind of stuff, that's perfect to be broken down. And I would even say like most sculptures, like we have the, we have the Benjamin Franklin, I mean the, uh, the Abe Lincoln, we have the Belvedere torso. Like those sculptures, if you, you, do a, you do a grid around them, you'll see everything. Quarters, halves, thirds, there are landmarks everywhere. They're built that way. Right? And so you'll find it both top to bottom and left to right, almost any way you look at it. And so a grid method is very good for something like that. You know, if you're copying a sculpture, very good for something like that. Same for something like this. Again, this is, it's, it's a tenth of the detail of the lion. But you're not breaking this down with standard unit of measure. Not alone. You need more. So, but these are the kinds of things that you would employ the grid method for. And again, once you've got things in place, before you start building out the drawing and finalizing it, use the angles. See if everything makes sense, right? It's easy to say, well, the drawing looks okay. I don't want to go and do, I don't want to do the angles because I'm going to find mistakes. Well, then you, you're kind of setting yourself up for a bad painting because you don't want to do the labor up front, right? If you know that there's a, there are additional ways of proofing your work, Use them. Proof your work. Make the changes. Play around with it. So, are we good on all of this? Any questions? No? At home. Just tell them. At home. Um, if you want to play around with the angles, all I did was, like I said, I used two sheets of paper. I put carbon paper in between, but they had to be perfectly squared to each other. I did a bunch of straight lines using a ruler so that they're exactly the same on both sheets. One I put in my shadow box and one I taped up. And again, perfectly square up here. If it's on an angle at all, a little bit of an angle, none of your measurements will be right. It has to be perfectly square and the one in the shadow box has to be perfectly square on the bottom sitting on your table. And then you can measure your angles. You can play with that. So at home you can experiment with that if you want. Okay. <laughs>
that's it. <laughs>